What's up everyone, it's from again, and today we're going to talk about Rain Code Chapter 0. As of making this video, I have not played Chapter 1 or anything past Chapter 1, so please don't try to spoil anything. I would like to play blindly like I have been with Chapter 0. And then you haven't played anything of Rain Code, you want to play blindly as well, then obviously leave the video because there will be some spoilers here of Chapter 0. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So, to start off, we have Yuma Kokohead, the main character of Rain Code. He seems to be our little protagonist here. And like most people have started to say, he seems to be the little love child of both Kyoko and Nayagi, which is very accurate. It's not just accurate on how he looks, but also on how he acts. He acts so much like Nayagi, it's not even funny, and then he's also a detective. So it also seems like he's taken after his mother, if, you know, we're going with that theme here. So, it actually makes perfect sense for him to uh, be like their secret little child, or even just some descendant from those two. So when we meet Yuma Kokohen, he seems to have lost his memory. This is only because he made a deal with a death god, also known as Shinigami, kind of redundant. And his deal was, if he gave up his memories, then Shinigami would help him try to solve cases and everything like that. So we don't know anything about Yuma as of right now, but we do know he has some weird connection with Shinigami. Shinigami is also this chaotic good character, where she's definitely very crazy and out there. And I definitely think it works with a character like Yuma, right? Where Yuma is more of a uh, reserved and shy character, and she's just kind of out there, and she's like, boom, kill ya! Which I actually find really funny. I love their little connection. She's awesome. Uh, throughout the game and she's kind of helping him and pushing him in the right direction so I do love their uh, back and forth with each other and that's when we have Yuma he goes on to the Amaterasu Express and he meets the other five detectives now when we get there they say that there's only supposed to be five detectives which is why everyone's kind of weirded out that Yuma's there just because they were only expecting five but now there's six so someone has to be there that's not at the there. Someone's probably an imposter as they say. So now we have to figure out who the imposter is and you know get to the bottom of this whole little mystery here. So that's when we meet Zilch Alexander. Zilch Alexander seems to kind of be like the front runner of this little group. Uh, he's not actually like a leader but he's the one who's kind of taking charge of it. Uh, and Zilch Alexander goes on to explain that each different detective has their own forte or their own little ability and forte is something that they use to help them with their investigations. So Zilch Alexander is sometimes called the nature's mediator and Zilch's forte is animal investigation where he uses animals, mainly mammals because they're easy to control like rats or even dogs to help him get information where he usually can't. He usually likes to use rats to get in places that he can't get into and he can get information from the rats to help him in his own investigation. Next we have Apex Milken, also known as kind of the wannabe Batman. That's the little joke I made when I first met him because his backstory is very similar to that of Batman. His parents died right in front of him when he was a young kid. That's when he had to leave. He escaped the killer and then he was kind of brought up in the slums he lived a little bit of a rough life and then he ends up becoming a detective and the main reason for revenge he wants to get revenge I don't know necessarily on just the killer but just revenge on anyone he thinks is pretty much evil uh, and his ability is kind of like a radar I don't think it gives us the actual name of the ability but he uses it like a radar where he can detect where people are in a certain radius his uh, limit is 50 meter radius so that's what he's uh that that's his ability then we got poochie Laughman is the young girl she seems kind of a body she seems kind of creepy uh but she is still a normal girl we do see that with yuma when they almost touch hands she starts blushing and uh getting a little shy with yuma there poochie's forte is audio aptitude which works somewhat like apex where she can hear the sound of heartbeats breathing etc she can use this to hone in on people and try to find people where they're hiding uh just from the sound of their heartbeat even they're holding their breath they can't stop their heartbeat from beating, obviously, because they would be dead. And she can even use this as a way to get information on people, try to hear in on their conversations. And her ability is at least somewhat compared to uh, Apex. Apex is like, yeah, but aren't our abilities kind of similar? It's like, you know, I have a 50 meter radius. That's how much I can detect. And she's like, yeah, I have a 500 meter radius. <laughs> so she kind of run up Apex there. Her ability is at the probably the best out of all, all the people here. So I really like her ability. Next we have Melmi Goldmine, easily the worst ability by far. Uh, we do learn that she had to grow up north with some other detectives who were really big into spiritism and uh, she acted there as a medium, that's kind of how she's been the, the medium detective. Now her ability is that she takes the uh, measurements of people's clothes 
And then when they die, she can then put on the clothes and she can bring them back from the dead. The reason I say this is the worst ability though, is one, she has to meet them before they actually die or else this won't work. Uh, and then if the clothes don't fit her, either they're too short or they're too big, she can't wear them. So it automatically makes the ability kind of useless because it only works for a certain amount of people there. She also does go on to say that if she doesn't like their little fashion choice or like what they're wearing, she won't wear it because that's just not, you know, something she wants to put on herself. So also another uh, thing that kind of hinders that ability. Like it started out good, but it doesn't really work that well. So her ability is kind of bad. Then we have uh, the last character, also known as Zange Eraser. He's an elderly man with the ability of photography, which can project an image from his memory onto electronics. Uh, there's a limit to how long this as he says. I think he said it was like two days before the image starts to fade. But he does go on to say that if you save the image to another device, then you can use this uh, image indefinitely as like evidence. Uh, either for an investigation or even for court trials and that's actually what he says is where this ability really comes in handy so it's pretty pretty good he also does say that he used to be better with this ability when he was younger and in his prime but as he's gotten older he's actually been a lot worse at using it it still is a pretty good ability uh, for certain instances but otherwise not not too crazy of an ability so now Yuma starts to feel a little ill and that's when he tells the group, he's like, I'm feeling a little woozy. They tell him, I right, go to the first train car, you can use the uh, the medical bay or the infirmary and you can just sleep in there. And so he goes over there, but he doesn't have to go to the infirmary, it's a lot. And then he ends up passing out in the bathroom uh, when he's trying to like find a key. And so that's when he had to meet Shinigami, that's when they talk and uh, un like explain everything for a little bit. But afterwards they leave and that's when they figure out that everyone else has been burnt to death. They don't know why, but someone has actually burnt everyone to death and he's the only one left. So he's been going through trying to investigate, trying to figure out what's been happening. And that's when they reach their destination and the police are there. The police think it's Yuma because he's the only one alive, kind of makes sense. So he starts to run away and that's when he runs into one of the peacekeepers and this guy's name is Swink Katsunel. Now. So Swink Katsunel Now seems to be a person of greed. That's kind of like the little theme I'm going with him is he's always talking about money and he has a bit of a greedy personality. He, he's not the smartest character out there. I, I think a lot of people can get that from him. But he's the one who's been pushing. He's like, no, it has to be you. There's no one else alive. Uh, and this is where we get to the mystery labyrinth. So Shinigami's ability is that she can actually open a pathway to the mystery labyrinth. And they can go in and find the actual truth on what happened in this uh, in this investigation. And this is where uh, a lot of people are definitely seeing the similarities between this and something like Dr. Wampa. Because you still have everything you do in Dr. Wampa. You still like cut through the lies or you have the little mini games. Uh, that you do in some of the previous games you still have that here uh, they are a bit different but for the most part they are the same uh, I actually was saying that this game has a bit of like Persona 5 vibes in it like the music is kind of like this smooth jazz uh, and in the mystery labyrinth is like this huge castle right and that's kind of the thing that you would do in Persona 5 you go in the app and then you would go and see like these different like building structures or castles or whatever it's kind of the same way so it's kind of like a good mixture of both which i have no problems with i love persona i love don guampa so combining both of them was really really cool and so that's when we go in and we figure out what actually happened so zilch is the one who anti committed all the murders he made it look like he had actually died but what he actually did was he switched bodies between him and apex and then when yuma ran away that's when he disembarked the first train and he made it go on a separate track away from the other three that's why when the first three came up the tunnel, they end up coming in front of him. He comes up behind, he puts it back together. So now it looks like five, right? Because at the very beginning, they do say that there's five train cars, but they leave the fifth one. And that's when they were setting up for this murder. Um, or at least for Zitch was so, uh, setting up for the murder. I'm pretty sure Zilch was kind of working with the peacekeepers here. And they were trying to just frame Yuma. I don't know if it was specifically Yuma. I think it was like... Okay, they either kill all of them or they leave one to stay alive and then they'll frame whoever's left because Zilch will try to hide away and that's what he did. So he put the body of Apex outside, he tried to take out any evidence that he could so they wouldn't catch him and he hid away in one of the rooms so they couldn't find him. And that's why it almost seemed like 
that Yuma was the only one, but he was able to figure this out, and that's how they add the anti so much. However, with Mystery Labyrinth, anytime they had to figure out the actual truth, they figure out who's the actual murderer of the investigation, that person go wants to die, so they don't actually get to uh, necessarily catch that person, he just dies. Don't really know how you're gonna explain that if no one else can like see the mystery labyrinth or whatnot. So the person dies and that's how they kind of prove their prove their innocence, I guess. And uh, at the end, that's when we meet uh, Yaku Yakuo Furio. I almost messed that up. So Yakuo Furio is the one he kind of comes in at the end and he's like, "Hey, look, dude, uh, paperwork's kind of a bitch." <laughs> and then uh, I think I saw the guy who was alive just a second ago. So you know, if you don't want to get any consequences about all of this, trying to frame someone who actually didn't do it, then uh, just let me handle it, okay? You just run along, I'll, I'll handle this guy. And he's like, alright, whatever. Uh, and that's that's the way that both him and Yuma can kind of get out of the situation. He seems to be another detective. We don't know much about him yet. Uh, we only talked to him for a little bit for Chapter Zero. But I can't wait to actually like, see more of him, because uh, he's he seems to be someone that I'm really, really gonna like. I have a sneaky suspicion he might be my favorite character of, of Rank Code, so hopefully that is the case. And uh, yeah, for this entire chapter, that's basically it. I loved it. It was amazing. Especially with how hard the actual investigation was. It wasn't something simple, right? Because like with Dunker Romper 1, it's like, oh yeah, we're gonna spell it out for you. It's Lee on. Hopefully you can figure that out. <laughs> Like that, that, there you go. It was a plastery on a fucking wall for you. But with this game, it's not that simple. They have everyone die, and it's like, okay, we don't really know who it is. And then throughout the entire investigation, you must figuring it out. But I'm sitting here just like, okay, what's actually happening? I really like that though. I don't want to have each investigation be easy or anything like that. I'd rather it be hard and difficult and somewhat confusing. Uh, just because it makes me more interested in what's actually happening and makes me want to see what's going to happen next. So, for me, I was okay with that. I don't know how other people feel about that. Um, I love the gameplay of it. We're launching Get to Good shows. I, I, I think I saw another YouTuber by the name of Ninko B. He, he also was making some similar jokes where you're literally launching Get to Good shows that like the truth, that's how you're cutting through the truth, like, you get Yuma, he has a badass sword, and then he has the sexy Shinigami with him, and then he launches attacks, uh, like, it's good to go tensions, like, he's Ichigo from Bleach, this was just all really, really cool, I really enjoyed it, my only big gripe with this is that I don't know for sure, they could come back, but if they are actually dead, like, Poochie, Apex, Melami, and Zonga, and even Zilch, because he dies after the Mystery Labyrinth, if they're all dead, that sucks. Like, that actually fucking sucks. Because how are we supposed to, like, you know, get to know them? I don't really know much about Pucci. I think Pucci's probably the one that we know about the least, other than maybe Zonga. Um, but I wanted to learn more about Melami, because her ability was terrible, and I wanted to know what does she do as a detective. Want to learn more about Poochie and see, like, does she grow a deep connection with Yuma? We don't get that now, and that really bums me out, because they all seem like pretty decent characters, but we will never fucking know now, because they're all dead. That's the only big gripe I have, but it also seems like we're going to get some other really cool characters, so I guess it's okay. It just, it really bums me out that everyone is fucking dead, and I was really getting into their characters, so... Outside of that, that's all I have. I really love this chapter. I'd probably give it like an easy 9 out of 10. I'm so excited to play the next couple of chapters. What did you guys think of the chapters? Did you guys like them? Do you guys have any problems with them at all? Uh, and yeah, without further ado, I will see you guys next time.